Do your photos end up lacking the wow factor even after you've edited them in Photoshop? If so, there's three simple editing tricks that will help you transform your photos so you can take them from looking like this to this. So in this video, I'll show you the simple trick to bring any photo to life with just a few clicks, the easy two click method that unlocks adjustments that pros use all the time, and I'll break down how you can easily use an advanced editing technique that will leave you with the perfect sunrise and sunset exposures every time. Have you ever been stuck editing an image, just wishing that you could make it stand out on pop, but no matter what you do, there's only so far you can push it before it looks overcooked and underwhelming at the same time. Well, one problem that a lot of photographers face is that sometimes an image just doesn't have enough color to begin with and you know you can't squeeze out something that isn't there in the first place. But there is some good news because there's a super simple technique that you can use to add and enhance colors beyond what's originally in your image and the way that I'm showing you how to do it means that it will still look as natural as if the color was there all along. So you can get creative with it if you want but to keep it natural follow the general rule that highlights in a landscape tend to have warmer colors and shadows tend to be cooler. So just keep that rule in mind as you follow these next steps. First, go to the channels panel in Photoshop. And if you don't see it here, go to window channels in the menu. And then on the keyboard, hold command on a Mac or control on a PC, and then click once with the mouse on the RGB channel here at the top. Then come back to the layers panel, add a new solid color layer. Choose any warmish color that you like here. We can dial it in properly in just a second. And then when done, change the blend mode to soft light in this drop down. Now you can go back and double click this color layer to open up the picker again and move the mouse around in this area to just dial in that ideal color that works best for your photo. And you're probably gonna find that even with the color you like, it's a little bit too intense. So what you can do then is reduce the opacity of this layer to blend it in until it looks really, really good. So what was that bit that we did in the channels panel anyway? Well, that step is what made this color layer only appear in the highlights of the image. So look how bad it looks if I disable the layer mask that is restricting it to just the highlights of the image. So you can see how being able to inject warm colors into the highlights can give your image an extra pop. But imagine being able to make any other kind of edit or adjustment that you can think of, contrast, light, detail, anything at all, and have it applied to just the highlights only. For example, if the sky is too bright and you want to darken it without darkening anything else, or if you want to reduce the contrast in the shadows without affecting the highlights. Well, this next editing technique builds on what I've just shown you so that you can do exactly this. Let's say you're starting with this particular image where the sky is way too bright. And so you add a curves adjustment to darken it, but the whole image goes dark. So let's undo that. And instead, before you add the curves adjustment, Simply command or control click on the RGB channel first and then add the curves adjustment and now darken your image and check it out. It's darkening the brightest parts without touching the darker parts. If you want to saturate the highlights, you can do the same thing and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And like I said, you can do this with just about any adjustment that you like. Pretty cool, right? But this is only half of the trick because what if you want to adjust the shadows and not the highlights? Well, here's what's happening under the hood. So it's the layer mask that's telling each adjustment where it can and can't go. So if it's telling this curves adjustment to go only in the highlights, then to make it only go in the shadows, we need the mask to do the opposite to what it's currently doing. To do that, you can simply click once on the layer mask with the mouse and then hold command or control on the keyboard and press I to invert the mask. And now, as if by magic, it's affecting the shadows and not the highlights. Now, this simple idea of adjusting different tonal ranges separately is one of the fundamental concepts that every pro photographer uses to edit their photos. But when I show you this next technique that supercharges what I just showed you and takes it to the next level, you'll gain even more control over your entire editing process and be able to create amazing results. Now, these techniques that I've shown you so far are all based on light values in a photo, but Light isn't the only thing that we can do this for. There's also a powerful new way to restrict adjustments that I can't believe more people aren't using. And so I'll show you that right after this, because first the two tricks I've shown you, they build upon each other and the same thing goes for number three. So let me break it down into simple steps and then I'll show you how to use it to guarantee perfect sunrise and sunset exposures. So let's say you wanna darken the highlights in the sky, but when you use the earlier techniques, the foreground also gets dark because the foreground also has highlights in it. What you need is a way to adjust the highlights, but only the highlights in the sky. So here it is. And the best thing is that these steps are only slightly different to the last technique that I showed you. The difference is this time you'll add your adjustment layer first 
and then make the change that you want to see in the sky, ignoring what it looks like everywhere else in the image. Next, you'll hide this entire adjustment by inverting its layer mask. Remember, click on it once and then Command or Control I to invert the layer mask. And then back in the Channels panel, Command or Control click on the RGB channel, which loads this selection of the highlights. And you can think of this selection like being a stencil that you're going to spray paint through, where it allows the paint only to go in some areas and not others. In this case, it's allowing it to go into the highlights. So click back onto the layer mask of the adjustment and take a large white brush on around 30% opacity and then brush through that stencil into the sky, revealing the darkening effect. Pretty cool again, right? And the thing is, it gets even better because these are the exact same steps that you can follow to manually blend two bracketed exposures which is something you'll often need to do with high contrast sunrise and sunset photos. The only difference is that instead of using it on an adjustment, the darkening effect comes from a second darker exposure that you captured in camera. Now a quick side note, if you wanna use this on a photo that you've already taken and you didn't do bracketed exposures at the time, you can try the next best thing by duplicating your background layer and then in the camera raw filter, adjust the exposure up or down appropriately. And then when you click okay, you're gonna end up with kind of like a faux bracketed exposure. But either way, here's how you can do the actual blend once you've got your dark and your light exposure. For this process, you're gonna make sure the dark one is on top, and then you're gonna add a layer mask to it. Invert the layer mask by clicking on it once, pressing Command or Control I, and then Command or Control click back on the RGB channel in the channels panel, and then click on the layer mask once more. Now you can brush through with your white brush onto this layer mask and you'll reveal the darker sky to create an even blend that is the perfect starting point for the rest of your edits and adjustments. And this is the fundamentals of a technique called luminosity masking, which is just a fancy way of saying making changes to your image based on how bright stuff already is. But like I mentioned a minute ago, what if there was a way to do the same thing based on distance instead of brightness so you could say brighten only the background or make only the foreground darker? Well, there is a way, but for some reason, Adobe have decided to hide it away in a dark, hard to reach corner of Photoshop for some weird reason. If you want to discover what this hidden technique is and how you can use it alongside what you've already learned in this video to make your photos really pop, then watch this next video.